Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to my new series, Five for Five, where I address what I believe are five of the most effective exercises for each muscle group, all in under five minutes. Be sure to check the video description for more on these workouts, including updated links to my Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts relating to new variations, modifications, and additional exercises to this series. With that being said, let's dive right in and check out the first of our five tricep exercises for today. This is what I normally start my tricep workout on. It's a great warm up exercise before then moving to one of the bigger exercises that we'll look at next. The thing I love about the V bar is it keeps our hands in a set sort of grip. And in doing so, it allows me to externally rotate my arms slightly so that as I'm really pressing down on that weight, all of that tension is now being caught on the tricep. Compared to if I keep my arms closer and I tend to put some of my body weight into it, working more of the shoulders and some other sort of assisting muscles. This really allows me to isolate those triceps by keeping the bar a little bit further out in front of my torso and angling my elbow slightly to really emphasize the tricep involvement. Full range of motion here, and as you can see, I'm keeping quite a smooth, fluid motion. I'm not locking out at the bottom. I'm not pausing too long up at the top. A continuous motion, especially in the first half of our workout, really warms up, gets the triceps fired up, and it really primes us for the next exercise. Instead of having the bar come straight down to my forehead, hence the name Skull Crusher, I find if you extend the arms a little bit further back, and so the bar comes down just behind the top of your head, you're keeping tension on the tricep throughout the full range of motion, as opposed to resting the weight, dead weight, on top of a locked out limb, which means we don't have quite as much tension in the tricep there compared to if we're laying back here. Another important factor here is your elbows. You don't want your elbows flaring out like this. Angle them inwards, even though it might feel a little bit foreign, by keeping the elbows angled inwards, your forearms remain much more sort of dead straight and center, which means the work is really being focused on the tricep and you're not having to lose some of that effort by keeping the angles outwards and some of the shoulders come in, you start to lose some of that effectiveness. Smooth, fluid, consistent reps. You see I'm not locking out my arms up at the top and really trying to squeeze, I'm keeping the repetitions continuous. So here we are with a single arm overhead dumbbell extension. Now these can also be done with cable or dual arm with a dumbbell or even with a bar, but I like performing them single arm because they allow me to focus on any weaknesses and get away from the more dominant arm taking control when doing a two-handed exercise. You can see I'm kind of lent up on an incline bench. That's to provide me with some stability, but I'm still engaging my core in this upright position with my arm directly overhead and then just flexing and extending at the elbow, which really helps isolate the tricep. The key with this, don't go too heavy and focus on achieving those 10 or 12 reps, getting a really great burn in the tricep rather than thinking about how much weight you can use. Those kind of motions are best for big compound exercises like those skull crushers or even using something like barbell dips, which we'll have a look at next. Do not underestimate the value that tricep dips can give you within your workout, even if you're not adding any extra weight, which is also why I include these towards the end of my arm or specifically tricep workout when I don't have the strength to add more weight like I was doing in the earlier exercises, but just my body weight alone will cause fatigue and failure within the 10, 12, 15 reps. First of all, the grip. Make sure that your knuckles are pointing down so you've got a strong, firm wrist as opposed to keeping the knuckles up and putting a lot of strain and unnecessary pressure on the wrists. The second thing is elbow. Look when I'm going down, my elbow never really goes much higher than my shoulder. So I'm always within this range of motion. If I go much up here, again, I'm putting unnecessary stress on my shoulder and really taking away much of that effort from the tricep. So our fifth exercise is a close grip Smith machine tricep press or chest press if you like, but narrow grip. And you can see my elbows are really held outwards here. So big tricep movement here. And the fact that it's on guided rails means unlike with a barbell or a shorter barbell, I'm not having to stabilize that weight, which takes away much of that effort by the main muscle here. So with this one, I'm truly able to isolate 
the triceps and get that really nice fluid sort of pump motion where even without using too much weight, I get this tremendous pump in my triceps. Another important factor, grip. I'm about two thumb widths away, close grip, and I also keep my thumbs out so the bar is actually resting more across my palm and my thumbs, which keeps me a little bit more fluid in the wrist, which means I'm not feeling much of that pressure. I can focus on just that motion of working the triceps. All right guys, that's it for today's five for five with our focus on triceps. I hope you found at least a couple of exercises that you wanna revisit next time you're back in the gym and really get a great pump in the triceps. As always, be sure to check the description. I'll include more information about today's five exercises as well as update some new links relating to Instagram stories or YouTube shorts where I'll show more variations, modifications, and continue to add further exercises to our triceps library. All right guys, on that note, Keep training hard, train smart, and I'll catch you here back on the next one. Take care.